Yeah, I mean, we got the opportunity to go out there and uh, meet with uh, congressmen and women and um, some staff in the, in the White House uh, about community relations and uh, police and community relations. And, you know, I think it was a very productive trip, um, voice some concerns and kind of hear what they're doing um, from a, a lawmaking standpoint and, and how they're handling the issue in Washington. Um, you know, like I said, we, we come from this community and, and it's kind of our way of taking the, the next step in, in this situation because it's, it's something that affects the entire country. So it's something important to me and the guys that were were down there. And like I said, I think it was very productive. When were you first approached and, and who, who kind of brought it up to you? Um, well, Anquan Bolden kind of, uh, you kind of handpicked the guys that he wanted to go down. Um, so they reached out to me weeks and weeks ago and it was something that we, we set up and like I said, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. Uh, do you take pride in the fact that you and Josh, two of four guys, are yeah. from the Browns? Team? No question, man. I mean, you know, I think it's no secret how I feel about Josh and, you know, what kind of guy he is, the kind of character he has. And, you know, anyone who's around him, including Anquan, who played with Josh, feels the same way. So, you know, that was special for us both to be down there together. Mark, what did you share with them in terms of your own experience and how you think mm -hmm. what, what you've dealt with in your life can help? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep the context of the uh, or the content of, of the meetings probably private. Um, but at the same time, like I said, I mean, I was, you know, they voiced their concern. It was very open uh, dialogue. And like I said, I feel like we made a lot of headway. and We got, you know, commitment to continue to work on the issue. And we'll be going back um, after the season, um, you know, right now doing working on some deliverables and, you know, hopefully continue to, to, to push the issue. Is this even more important now, given, given the climate, post-election, where you know, ten tensions seem to be high just in general? I think it's important because it's an issue. Um, it's not a new issue at, by any stretch of the imagination for decades and decades. And, you know, it's just the difference is we have the opportunity to affect it, um, I feel like. And, you know, and, and hell, maybe we don't. But, you know, who are we if we don't take advantage of our influence and, and try? You know, and I, and I think the, the platform we're given is a special one, um, and I feel like a lot of guys feel that way. And like I said, I'm, we're just trying to use it to the best of our ability. Can I ask you a, a, a kind of a related question? Um, do athletes go into areas like, like Chicago, where a lot of cool. inner city people are shooting each other, up, mm -hmm. right? and then it's not police shooting? Right. Do you guys go into those communities and say, you guys have to change your behavior? Um, well, to say that, I feel like is a different subject in itself. It'd be like me saying, do I go to the suburbs where they kill each other as well and say you guys need to change your behavior or be like saying you know fighting against ter terrorism which we all hate to say that Americans need to stop killing each other before we worry about terrorism which wouldn't make a lot of sense so I don't think they're that related um, but at the same time we do work in the community obviously uh, anyone who knows me here in Cleveland knows I work in the community here every year as much as possible even in Cincinnati where, where, where I consider a second home and back in my hometown and you know that's important. I don't, care, I don't care where you're from. Working in your community is an important part, and that's something I've done for a long time. I think the, the guys that were there do for a long time. A lot of guys in this locker room do for a long time, and it's something we'll continue to do. But what we're focused on is community and police relations when we went to Washington. So that was the focus, and that was the issue at hand. Did you the most encouraging thing you heard? The most encouraging thing? I, you know, I don't think it was anything specific. I think it was the willingness of all the congressmen to hear us out, be open with us, and really just be open and committed to, to, to changing things for the better. Um, you know, and, and I don't, Republican and Democrat, I mean, we, we met with everybody and they met with us and it was open arms. Like I said, it was, it was great dialogue. And, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm very thankful for the opportunity to be able to, um, to meet with them and, and hopefully create some change. Did you know that they would be that open to you guys? I mean, you never know. You know, I'm not a congressman and it was my first time meeting with them. And, um, like I said, I, w I was encouraged by how receptive th they were. Um, you know, so I can't say that I knew that, but like I said, I'm, en I'm encouraged now. And, you know, me and Josh have been talking about it all day, how productive um, the day was as a whole um, and, and excited for the future. Have the What's guys it? in the locker room been asking you about yeah. the trip? Yeah, yep. Some guys have been asking me about the trip, for sure. What's next? What, what, what's the next step now that you've done this? I mean, I mean, continuing to do it. Um, you know, working on the, on the community level, like we said, and. Um, you know, I, I've had conversations with, with Chief Williams here in, uh, in, in Cleveland and, you know, I mean, just trying to understand more. I mean, that, that was the, the main focus of the trip yesterday was information. For them to inform us and for us to inform them what we thought. And, you know, like I said, I've had conversations with uh, the police chief here in Cleveland for the same reason. 
And like I said, I feel like there's an openness everywhere, and it's a matter of connecting the dots. So many times you get caught up thinking that you're either on this side or that side, and I'm right, you're wrong. And that, that's not productive, that's not progressive, and, and it's honestly not the reality. So if everybody loving the game of football can bring people together or hear people out or make a Republican and Democrat sit down and have a conversation or have you know police and community sit down and do an event, then, like I said, that's our responsibility and that's what we need to do. Were you nervous? Since you say you've never been in front of Congress, mm -hmm. I, I'm like talking to us all the time. Were you nervous in front of those guys? Nah, I mean, that wasn't nerve. Nerves is... Uh, <laughs> It's third and six in the fourth quarter in front of 75,000 people. That's where nerves kick in. That, this, was, uh, this was light work. <laughs> Dude, there seemed to be, I was just going to ask you, you touched on it just for a second. Mm -hmm. At the crux of all this, is it communication? I mean, is that where there was common ground when you yeah. were speaking to them and back and forth that everybody's got to reach out to each other? And yeah, no question. I mean, I think that's the root of, of any problem. I mean, communication is the only way to solve anything. And, um, you know, that, that, that was the, the main focus of this entire thing. It wasn't anything more than that and like I said I mean we'll, the next steps will come and you know and who knows maybe the communication isn't going to be as great you know throughout the entire process but that's fine but it's, this is a, this is a start and this is a change um, a focus on change and like I said it's, it's, it's a very important step in the process. Andrew, coach talked about you know your teammates seeing you and feeling this but you know as a father too how, how important is it that your kids whether they, they know what's going on now or just in the future yeah. will be able to say you know my dad was involved in this and, and they want to follow in your footsteps well i think it's everything man and um you know i mean that's the only reason why I, that's probably the main reason why i'm so passionate about things like that is because you know i mean when you're when you're young and you're by yourself and it's like okay it's you know it's just me but then we have to worry about the future of your children which i feel like you know is the root of all americans i mean that's the american dream to leave things better for your children um, than when you have them, and, and that's the responsibility I have as a father. You know, my grandfather, honestly, he was fighting for a lot of the same things. He was a, a, a Republican who was a part of, um, you know, the, he would speak at two Dem or Republican national conventions, and I have pictures hanging in my house of him with uh, President Carter, President Reagan, President Bush, and, um, and I feel like a lot of that was instilled in me. To be able to, to grow up seeing that, you know, let me know that it doesn't matter where I'm from or you know, how minuscule people think I am to the equation that I have the power to make a difference even a little bit or encourage somebody else who might have uh, more of a power to make a difference. What's, what's your grandfather's name? I'm sorry. Bur Burl Hasserig. Burl Hasserig Sr. Yep. Have you thought about getting involved with politics once football's over? Um, I haven't given it a, a bunch of real thought. I mean, I'm, I'm focused on football right now, but at the same time, if, it's, if, it's, if there's any way I can help people, that's what I'm passionate about is helping others. Um, that are less fortunate or helping others, you know, get opportunities or have better lives. So if, if, if politics is a means to do that and I can create some positive change, that's the legacy you want to leave. You know what I mean? That's, that's something you can sink your teeth into. You know, the, the, the money and the, the fame and all that kind of stuff, it's cool, but it's, it's not anything important and it, nothing to, you know, my kids will be able to, to say, man, that was my dad and something I'm proud of. You just, just change the subject a little bit, but mm -hmm. I think this is the first time you're playing Pittsburgh since concussion. Yeah. Is there any lingering anger, bitterness, any feelings at all? No more than them being uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> and, I mean, that's pretty much all you need. So, um, yeah, I mean, I had the same fire I always do. You know, I'm from Western Pennsylvania. My, a, a major portion of my family are Pittsburgh Steelers fans. So, you know, that in itself is enough for me. Yeah, you, you, of course, faced that from two teams. Wasn't that rivalry stronger with the Bengals since, you know, you guys won some, they won some, and it's not so even here. Um, no, I mean, you could say that, but at the same time, it's still Cleveland Browns versus Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't, you know, I think the rivalry is stronger here for, for, for Cleveland fans. I mean, you can't look a Cleveland fan in the face and say that, you know, and even in Pittsburgh, I mean, at the time, we were still trying to find our way, and we had some good teams and some good battles, but, you know, Browns and Steelers, that's, that's a story. I know it came up when, when the Jordan hit earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. um, I never got a good explanation from the league why that wasn't. I know that you're fine last year. Yeah. Did, did that boggle your mind, or did you try to get some kind of explanation? <laughs> nah, man. I mean, you know, you play this game long enough, you're going to see that. You're going to be a part of it. You know, you're going to see it happen to other players. You know, I mean, like I said, it's it's over and done with. I can't explain the rules, and I don't think any of us can explain a lot of the rules, and that seems to be the norm now. So. Did you have any kind of a wow moment when you were there yesterday? Um. Wow moment. Yeah, I mean, we, we stood in front of a, a, a picture in, in the, 
the Eisenhower Executive Building over at the White House of um, Martin Luther King. And um, it was the meeting where that kind of prompted, you know, blacks being able to vote, which was a big deal. And so to see that, and like I said, just walking in those historic hallways and, and realizing all the history you've learned about and you're like literally in the same space as them, it was a, it's a surreal moment. It's kind of like, you know, and I say it all the time, being able to put on the same helmet as Jim Brown. You know what I mean? That's a big deal. And I know, you know, we get caught up that, oh, yeah, everyone puts it on every year. But, I mean, it's a, it's a privilege. And, you know, when, when you get to be in the presence of greatness like that, you, you got to appreciate it.